Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson with Story Keepers. My name is Cheryl, and I'll be your teacher for today. So we will be visiting ancient Corinth. I know for the past two weeks, you've learned quite a lot about Corinth. So today, we're going to focus on exploring the pets that were found in Corinth on Apostle Paul's journey. So where do we read about Corinth? We find Corinth mentioned in Acts chapter 18, verse 1. Apostle Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. So just to give you a little background before we talk about the pets, um, Apostle, what was Apostle Paul doing in Corinth? You know, he was a man, a very religious man actually, but not a religious man that knew Jesus for himself. And he really, he didn't originally believe that Jesus was the son of God. And it, he got to a point where he so sincerely thought that imprisoning Christians and, and even ordering the death of some Christians was doing God a great service. Um, and it was only until Jesus revealed himself to Paul that he, Paul realized actually Jesus truly is the son of God. And because he had this personal encounter with Jesus, he was so excited. He traveled from Athens, as we just read, and he went to Corinth to go and share the good news with everyone he could find. So just looking at the animals that he would have come across, Owls were commonplace in ancient Greece, and the most common coin at the time was known as little owl. The current one euro coin minted in Greece bear has the same picture of an owl as the ancient Greek coin. In ancient Corinth, horses were important in life, especially in traveling and hunting. Horses were expensive to purchase and to maintain, and for these reasons, ownership was largely limited to the wealthier members of the community. Beach martens are small weasel-like animals. This is about the size of a cat. British zoologist George Rolleston theorized that the domestic cat of the ancient Greeks was in fact the beach marten. So why is it important to understand this information? You need to know the people of Corinth used animals as symbols of prosperity and wealth. This was a wealthy town and Paul was sharing the gospel, the good news, with people who were affluent and wanted for nothing. So if we think about how it must have been for Paul in Corinth facing all these affluent and well-to-do people. It might have been a bit of a challenge for him to try and convince that such a people with everything that having everything they need already would actually still have a greater need. And that greater need was to understand that Jesus came to the earth, died for their wrongs, rose again and will come again to rule and reign in heaven and earth. And actually to have Jesus is to have everything. So the people of Corinth, although they were wealthy, they really didn't have it all. So what is God trying to tell us through this story? You need to know that, as Jesus said, there is no benefit if you gain everything in this world but lose your very own soul. And I'm sure a lot of you, you know, you're only young, and I'm sure sometimes you see your school friends with all the latest devices, you know, gadgets and things. And, you know, you might see famous people um, having, owning so much, possessing so much wealth, and you might secretly think, you know, I'd love to own all of that. Well, really, the most important thing you need to remember is if you have Jesus, you have everything. You have more than money could buy. And actually, you have something to offer the wealthy. You have Jesus. Um, so God also reminds us that um, the wealth of the people of Corinth was actually corrupting them. It's not that it, they were using it for good, and God wasn't happy with that. And we know the scripture reminds us that the love of money, not money itself, but the love of money is the root of all evil. So the, the rich should not be um, high-minded, meaning, you know, they shouldn't think um, they are self-sufficient, they don't need their creator, um, and they should not trust in their riches. But what God wants is for people to put their trust in him. And um, remember that God is the one who gives you and me the power to provide 
and to produce wealth. So what can we learn from this? We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Jesus offers us more than riches, but eternal life. And Job in the Bible, he also said, naked we came into this world and naked we will leave. I don't think anyone has ever seen a baby born with clothes on or a Rolex watch on their wrist. You know, even if the baby grows up to be a wealthy individual, he cannot take any of his riches with him. But um, the pharaohs have a completely different belief. They believe they can take their riches with them to the afterlife. They, they go to the extent of burying their pharaohs with food and drink and, 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 and clothes, jewelry and and even weapons, they say, to protect, them, protect themselves in the afterlife. Well, we know the Holy Scriptures tells us that when we die, we will go before God's throne and we will be judged whether we accepted the eternal life and forgiveness of sins that Jesus offered us. So the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. We must use our wealth to please God and lay up treasures in heaven. Also, God wants us to share the riches of his grace and forgiveness for sins with people around us despite their wealth or status. Your homework for this week, we want you to look up the, some of the ancient coins of Corinth and draw pictures of them. Then we want to, you to find out two more facts about the ancient Greeks beach martin domestic cat. Then we want you to read one of Paul's letters to Timothy. He wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 12, that godliness with contentment is great gain. So what I want you to do is write that verse out and, and think about what that means to you. And then lastly, on your worksheets that you can download off the website, um, I want you to just remember that Paul was a missionary and there's, you know, different ways that we can share the gospel with our friends, with our family. And what I'd like you to do on, on your sheets is just write down the names of your school friends. Uh, it could be friends in the neighbourhood, um, family members that don't know Jesus, and, and just list their names down. And, you know, you can start praying over them that, God will reveal who Jesus is to them, just as God revealed who Jesus is to Paul. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.